Hey, what's up, guys? It's Julian Hemmings here. I just want to do a quick video, quick legal video about uh, the Tyree Nichols case. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm really happy uh, to do this. Uh, it's an honor. You know, as you guys know, I'm a student at the University of Michigan Law School. Let me slow down. Sorry. It's, it's, uh, it's, a, it's a crazy night. Just watched the video. It was very upsetting. Um, you, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm so sorry for his mother. I'm just so sorry for for his entire family, and um, you know, so I'm 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 very happy to 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 provide this service to people, uh, so that they can see what's going on in terms of, you know, how this system is functioning. Uh, as, as far as Benjamin Crump and the uh the chief of Memphis police been saying, they've been moving swiftly. Uh, you know, there's something that I do I truly believe in is that um. You know, with this case, it just shows these are black police officers, right? It, it means that it doesn't matter if you put someone that is a person of color in a system that's messed up. If the system is messed up, no matter who you put in it, it will create a messed up circumstance. And uh, that doesn't mean that people can't get involved and do good while being in that space. But what that does mean is that we must be aware that all because you have a person of color, all because you have a woman, all because you have these, these checks of identity put into a position, doesn't mean that good results will come. There needs to be a systemic change to do justice, point blank, period, right? Uh, uh, so there is a couple of things I wanna talk about. Um, I wanna go through uh, the second degree murder charge uh, and talk about uh, w uh, what kind of, uh, yeah, the elements of, of what a second degree murder charge is. Uh, of course, you know, a lot of this is is different based off of what district, but I'm trying to find those general definitions so that you guys can, can kind of see uh, what this means. Um, and I want to talk about qualified immunity. Um, and uh, I'm, I also, I, I want to put a video, uh, play video of what Tyree Nichols, uh, his mother uh, was saying. And I think this is just really important. Um, so let me, let me just, let me just look at some of the charges real quick before we continue. So let me, let me pause the video really quickly so I can get all everything just set up for a conversation, okay? Okay, perfect. So I just found uh, the definition of second degree murder. Uh, so I want to say this. So uh, Tennessee is within the Fourth Circuit. And so let's look at the definition of a second degree murder uh, under uh, uh, Tennessee, under the Fourth Circuit uh, as definition. So in uh, North Carolina, I know, I know the case in Tennessee, but uh, it's in the same circuit. Um, second degree murder is defined as the unlawful killing. Uh, so that's, that's an element. So, so we look through, um, the element test is through, uh, the actus reus, uh, attendant circumstances. So actus reus means the, the act, right? Um, the mens rea, men, mind is mental. And of course the attendant circumstances, which is all the other things that can add, uh, to make it. So things that are not acts or things that are not thoughts, but things that are surrounding it. Um, but anyways, so a second degree murder charge is defined as the first element, which is the unlawful killing, right? Two of a human, the second element is a human being, right? For the mens rea is with malice, but without premeditation or deliberation. So what does that mean? Premeditation, deliberation. That means premeditation, deliberation means that one created a plan. So if one does not devise a plan, um, but they, they unlawfully killed a human being with malice, so with evil intent, uh, they committed second degree murder. Now, if they have uh, uh, their act was premeditated and deliberate, then at that point, it goes from second degree murder to first degree murder. The prosecutor in this case uh, decided to move on with um, a, a, a second degree murder charge instead. 
And then the second charge, and we're going to go with find it within uh, within the Tennessee criminal. Oh, wait, actually, let me let me find a let me see if I could find something uh, a little a little better. Let me actually find a better case. One second, guys. Okay, perfect. Uh, I found it. Let's let's go back and, and do let's go back to a case. Um, so in United States v. Gabby, it's 2016, uh, the U.S. Court of Appeals Fourth Circuit. Uh, aggravated assault is defined as a felonious assault that involved, these are the elements, a dangerous weapon with intent to cause bodily injury. Um, with that weapon, serious bodily injury, strangling, suffocating, or attempting to strangle or suffocate, an intent to commit uh, another felon, or, or sorry, or, excuse me, this is that was one or an intent to commit another felony uh, under the U.S. Sentencing Guidelines Manual. So these are these are the two ways. Well, well let's focus on the first way because uh, we can kind of navigate that some more. I'm not really going to go through an elements test and and try to argue the case. It's not my job, but it's just something that you guys should know. Uh, the tool that I'm using for this is something called that all you know lawyers and law students use usually. It's called LexisNexis, and it gives you like all the circuits, um, it gives you the type of court. Uh, so, you know, Tennessee's in the fourth circuit. So we go to the fourth circuit, it's federal. And then we go to a criminal case, of course, uh, as compared to a civil. And then we see all the cases uh, that involve the application of this. So if you guys want to see how this is usually applied, uh, please, please go check this out, okay? Um, so I want to go ahead and... Um, I want to I want to look at just a quick video of um, uh, Tyree Nichols's uh, mother. Uh, 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 actually, I want I want to do a quick video of, of of what what happened to Tyree Nichols, if that's okay with you all. So let's do it. I understand it wish to proceed. I understand it wish to proceed. All right, let me pause this real quick, and then let me. See if I can, if I can share sound. We have the second clip now released by the city of Memphis. You another warning. This video apparently is the most graphic and the most shocking to watch. Also, again, we want to give a warning. There are likely lots of profanities. This is, from what we understand, the Sky Cop cam video, which is a pole cam looking down at the arrest and subsequent beatdown. Okay, um, so you know, as you guys are seeing, they have Tyree Nichols down right there. Um, so I'm being told by our producers, again, we're watching this in real time, that there is no audio on this, but you do not need to listen to this because what we're yeah, seeing. Yeah, so, right, so so what's happening, man, is um, they're, they're putting this young brother on the ground um, and, and, they're, and they're just being super violent. Um, you know, this is, this is a lot for people to watch. I know, and, and of course your discretion is advised, but it's important that people see this. Um, you know, they're basically torturing the young brother and, um, and, you know, this is a result of something, um, in the law. I mean, I mean, that, that, that protects this kind of behavior, excuse me. And of course, I, I want to give the caveat that that not all cops are like this, um, but there is a system that protects them, and uh, that system is is called qualified immunity. Uh, so we were actually talking about this in uh, in civil procedure, and um, you know, qualified immunity, right, is a type of legal immunity. Uh, qualified immunity balances two important interests, right. Uh, the need to hold public officials accountable when they exercise power responsibly and the need to shield officials from harassment, distraction, and liability when they perform their duties reasonably. Now, now what does that mean, right? Uh, qualified immunity was put in place so that, you know, police officers and other government officials that are there to protect us and 
uh, and, and, and they act on our behalf are able to do so uh, without feeling as if every executive decision that they're making will cause them to to be in the way of, of legal retribution, legal harm or, or sorry, uh, or, or being or legal punishment. Um, and, uh, you know, of course, um, you know, nobody wants a police officer to fear every single moment. But in cases like this, these, when police are battering or government officials are battering and violating uh, uh, people, qualified immunity is, is put, it, put out there. And basically, it, it gives a heightened standard for the court to see whether or not they want to pursue the case. And, uh, you know, if the court finds that, you know, while the violence might have been or it's conceivable, as I was talking about in my previous video, right, that that this action was was conceivably done, which is like conceived is like I could imagine how it could be instead of it being plausible, then uh, the court under 12B6 motion, which is a motion to dismiss, will will take away the case. Uh, an example of this is a case called uh uh, I think it's called Ick, it's it's called Iqbal. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, 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 right here. Ashcroft v. Iqbal. And uh in the case Ashcroft v. Iqbal, there was a uh, a gentleman of the Muslim faith. Uh he was from the Middle East, and uh, you know, he was working in the US and 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 trying to really live out his American dream. And uh during the, the September eleventh attacks, of course, in New York. Uh, the the uh, America was understandably on edge. Uh, George Bush gave a directive to a security official saying, don't ever let this happen again. As a result, um, the civil liberties of Americans uh, were retrenched by the state. Furthermore, the civil liberties of people of color, specifically Middle Eastern Americans or people who lived in, in America uh, and that were from the Middle East were significantly retrenched, or people who just visited the U.S. that that were uh, um, that appeared to to be Muslim, their civil liberties were violated by the U.S. government, and it was actually violated from the gentleman who uh, pursued the Trump investigation against Russia. Uh, let me just make sure. Yeah, 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 right here. So one of the people that put this guy, a uh, gentleman named Iqbal, um, base, so, so Iqbal behind bars, where he had to stay there and be interrogated and went through punishment and was physically assaulted while he was imprisoned, was a gentleman by the name of Robert Mueller. And um, and, uh, you know, you know, when it when Iqbal was finally able to, to to make a case against the government after after the pain and suffering that he encountered, because he wasn't, you know, doing anything. He was just he was he was just taken up because he appeared to be suspicious and in prison because he appeared to be suspicious. It's something that he could never even choose for himself, which is which is his own identity. And he made a, a claim against the government. They put a qualified immunity claim. The court said that even though that they were rounding up Muslim Americans, it wasn't necessarily because they were Muslim Americans. It was because Muslim Americans happened to be the ones that were terrorists to America. Just like a really messed up decision. And these are kind of the messed up ideas that we have to constantly undergo and think about within the legal system. Um, uh, but, but that's, but, but that's, but, but because the reason why is because the state doesn't want to say, Hey, uh, Robert Mueller, you're wrong. Hey, the state doesn't want to say police officer, you're wrong for beating that black man. You need to face some kind of retribution for that or some kind of legal, uh, justice for that. No, the court says instead, they say this instead, listen, you are a government official. We will give you the benefit of the doubt. It is. It might be conceivable that you did it, but we cannot automatically infer it, which if you can't see 
discrimination from a mile away in the Iqbal case as being uh, plausible. And I don't know what planet you live on, right? I don't know what planet you live on, but that's what happened here. And so, you know, this power, this protection, qualified immunity is given to state officials is the reason why a lot of these cases that where police are brutalizing people of color, they don't move far. They don't move far because there is such a high standard. There is such a high standard that it, it, it's impossible to me. I want to play the uh, the clip with uh, you know Don Lemon and and uh, and uh, Mr. Uh, Mr. Nichols' mother, but uh, but it seems like you know uh, Zoom doesn't play the audio uh, that I, that I'm watching. So unfortunately, I hope you guys can watch that for yourselves. Just look it up online. But it's it's good for you all to know basically what these things mean, and uh, and see how I how I do legal research. And so that you all can do this for yourselves. And as you guys go through the case, and you don't even have to go ahead and um, and go through Lexis Next. It's a pretty expensive program. Go ahead and you can go to Google and try to figure it out from there. Uh, you can do legal research from there as well. So, you know, stay on top of this case, guys. Uh, don't let this thing go past you. Don't, don't, don't stop caring. This was a wrong that society committed to this young African-American man. He's 29 years old. I'm 24 years old, right? That could have been me. And, uh, and uh, you know, and he was killed by, by officers who didn't care about, you know, his life. And people that protect us, that should be there for us, people that we pay tax dollars to, uh, should not be able to kill that quickly. I'll be on the Gilchrist experience on Wednesday. Hopefully I can get, you know, deeper into, into the legal analysis. But just for now, it's a really quick talk. I just want to share with you guys my thoughts. And, uh, you know, based off of, you know, you got to, so what's going to be hard about this case from a legal perspective is proving that the cops had malice. Um, you, you know, the, of course, they're going to make the defense based off qualified immunity as well. And and that's a question, right? Of course, going to have to weigh whether or not they, from a legal realist perspective, uh, which is just how the law actually works. You know, do they want to charge these cops in this way? Uh, you know, do they want to do they want to make other cops feel afraid? Uh, and uh, that's a question the court's going to just have to wait for itself. And 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 if you say that the cops were were malicious in their intent towards uh, Mr. Nichols, that's that's a really big statement for the court to make. And a lot of time, ladies and gentlemen, the court's very conservative. And I don't mean conservative in the political stance, but I mean conservative in the stance of we don't want to push that far. We don't want to push that hard. Uh, um, and we don't want to, we don't want to, we don't want to buck against the institution. Here's a pregnancy for many lawyers, not me, uh, uh, to protect institutional standards as they've been. Um, it's a it's a big boys club. So thank you guys very much for watching. Uh hopefully I can upload this really quickly. It's not you know, well done or anything like that, but it's important and uh, you all should watch. So have a great one, guys. God bless.